wins, no losses, not a lot of power, as you'll see. 12 KOs, 92 Olympic silver medalist at 165 pounds. The opponent across the ring is the other New Zealand heavyweight besides the well-known David Tua. Jimmy Thunder, like Tua, has his roots in Samoa, grew up in Auckland, New Zealand. He says that a fight between him and Tua would fill an outdoor stadium in Auckland or Christchurch. He's 132, lost eight, 26 by KOs. When he doesn't get a KO, he struggles because by no means is he the kind of boxer that Chris Bird is. Both fighters in the ring already. And we bring you the tale of the tape between Chris Bird and Jimmy Thunder, and you'll see that Bird has grown to weigh 215 pounds. He says, I'm like Muhammad Ali. He doesn't swat like Ali, at least not yet. Four-year age advantage for Bird, two-inch reach advantage for Thunder, who weighed in at 230 and must produce Thunder to win the fight. Rules of the bout with our ringside judge, Harold Letterman. The Chris Bird, Jimmy Thunder fight is scheduled for 10 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 10th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold, let's go to ring announcer Ed Darian. Darian for the pre-fight introductions. Yeah, live from Foxwoods Resort Casino here in Mashantucket, Connecticut for its HBO's Boxing After Dark. is being promoted by Main Events Fight Night in association with Foxwoods Resort Casino and Budweiser, the king of beers, is sanctioned by the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation Gaming and Athletic Commission. Its chairman, Robert Hayward, vice chairman, Roy Butler, commissioner is Bill Hickey, and the executive director is John Meskill. Our chief physician in attendance of ringside this evening is Dr. Michael Schwartz, along with his two fine associates, Dr. Joseph Carpentieri and Dr. Anthony Alessi. Our judges for this scheduled 10-round heavyweight bout, Glenn Feldman, William Hutt, and Clark Sammartino. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of this scheduled 10-round heavyweight bout, Double S, referee Steve Smoger. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the black trim. He weighed in at an even 230 pounds. Now, this veteran pugilist has 32 wins, 8 losses with 26 knockouts. All the way from Auckland, New Zealand, and now making his home in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome... Jimmy Thunder from Down Under. Thunder. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at an even 215 pounds. Now this fella is undefeated in 22 pro bouts with 12 knockouts. He is currently ranked number eight by the IBF from Flint, Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Chris Bird. Bird. Alright, uh, Jimmy and Christian, we're giving your instructions in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times, and respect the bell. Touch words, God bless. One of the things about Bird, Jim, is you, you can't insult him by calling him boring because to him, boring means he's won the fight. Ready, Let's see if he can Clark. modify his profile as he has promised in this fight. Jimmy Thunder likes to start very fast. He knocked out Crawford Grimsley in 13 seconds with one overhand right. But Bird is not easily found, and Thunder doesn't find him with his first long walk across the ring. Body shots by Thunder. The first landed punches of the bout. These are the type of fighters that Bird wants to fight. Chris Bird knocks Jimmy Thunder down with a left. And Deslin, we told you he was boring. He makes it exciting. He, these are the kind of guys he wants to fight. These big punches. They're tailor-made for him. He's an excellent boxer, and this is where he gets to use his speed and his skill to outsmart him. Now, it's interesting. You see Thunder going almost exclusively to the body early. Thunder's trainer, Eddie Mustafa Mohammed, said, hey, Bird moves a lot, but he moves his head all the time. Doesn't move his body that much. Guys make the mistake of trying to go up top against him. They should throw nothing but body punches. Thunder 
landing some early on. One thing we also found out, Thunder, is that you can't just run into a guy, no matter whether he's supposed to be a puncher or not. When the gloves are this small, everybody can punch to a degree. Uh, he was just squared up to him, and he was off balance, and he just got knocked out, knocked down. Obviously, the punch didn't hurt him at all. The Thunder's body shots could make a difference in this bout if he continues to land them at this rate. Because how's he going to keep throwing them at this rate? Good question. He seems to be tired a little bit already. Should be. With that kind of punch output, he was throwing punches at 100 punch per round rate. Almost all of them body shots. Chris Bird having weathered the early storm and scored an early knockout against Jimmy Thunder. Oh, looks to get his own jab going. Thunder drives him back into the ropes with body shots. Uh, early knockdown. Early and, knockdown, yes. And Larry, I, I, I think that uh, Chris Bird is truly hurting Thunder with these head shots. And he's also taking some good shots from Thunder. This is an interesting round because both fighters have made so much contact. And that's not what we expected would be the case. Thunder keeps walking in like this, he's going to get knocked out because Chris is much too skilled for him to just walk in defenseless. So you have a lot of respect for Chris's boxing skill. Yes, his, family, his whole family's been in boxing since he was a little kid. You can't help but to respect a family like this. His father's well-schooled, and I mean, you can't help but to know that this is what this kid did his entire life. He grew up sparring with his brothers in an eight foot by eight foot enclosed room in the basement of his house, and says that his great defensive skills came from fighting in that tiny ring. So that should tell you right there. <laughs> torpedoes to the body, all right? Hit him on the arms, hit him in the wrist, and the body. That's all you got to do. Touch him with your jaw. There you see Chris Bird. The gazelle turned into a lion momentarily as he caught. <laughs> knocked him on the seat of his pants. All right, corner. Papa Bird, Eddie. He can hold box him out there. By CompuBox count, Jimmy Thunder threw 85 punches in round one, 83 of them power shots. He only threw a couple of jabs, and of course landed 34 punches, almost all of them to the body. You heard Eddie Mustafa Muhammad telling Jimmy Thunder between rounds, forget about his head, just keep hitting his body with both hands. He caused them torpedoes. His, his dad was a, a Navy man, so that's where his terminology comes from. Chris Bird lands a straight left hand. Your head's going in, fellas. One thing Bird does very spectacular to me is he gets, gets his hands far out in front of him so he can deal with the punches long before they reach a danger zone on him. Most fighters don't do this, but this is a very good tactic. Good three-punch combination by Chris Bird there. Thunder, who threw 85 punches in round one, won't throw 40 in this round at this pace. Is that one of the reasons, Roy, that yes. he doesn't have power in his punches, that his arms are extended like that? No, that's not a reason that he doesn't have power. He doesn't have power because he doesn't choose to be a power puncher, and he doesn't sit down on the punches. But this makes people like Thunder not want to punch when they're sitting outside because he doesn't see an opening. All he sees is two gloves in front of his gloves, so he thinks there are, he thinks there are no openings there, and he won't be so quick to throw punches, especially big punches. Bird again able to land one-twos. Right jab, left cross, straight down the pipe. Push Thunder, as you can see, does Come not on. defend himself very well. Got no head movement to speak of. And whenever Thunder's 
stops his head moving. Bird fires the jab and the left cross. I tell you what, and Bird is hurting Thunder with those left body shots. Every time he hits them, we hear him grunt way over here. It's a whole different Jimmy Thunder in round two. And therefore, Bird is able to fight an entirely different fight. And he's landing accurately and precisely throughout the round. Well, Jimmy Thunder seemed to have thrown everything he had early. He doesn't seem to have a whole lot of power left. Thunder lands a shot to the body. Bird lands one up top. If you've been watching the sport long, you know what the judges prefer. It's very hard to win fights with body punches if you're not able to break your opponent down and get him to the head eventually. Yeah, they're mainly a good investment for the later rounds. Get, take the power out of the guy, make him tired from beating his body early, and it usually helps you in the late rounds. A little smile for Bird at the end of the round, who seems to believe that he can fire that left hand and land it when he wants to. Tim Witherspoon warming up in his dressing room. We're told that Witherspoon's handlers left his boxing shoes in his hotel room, and somebody has been sent off now to gather the shoes. The hope would be that we don't get a quick knockout in this fight, which might bring Witherspoon to the ring barefoot. <laughs> Be, but I taught you the gym. Yeah, this guy, no, every time you hit him in the body, you hurt. Yeah. You're not doing anything. Funny. Step to the man, step to your left, and you step to him and keep the jab going and work to the body. Stop backing up on the man. You're going to lose yourself in there. Stop backing up. Keep touching him with the jab and work to the man's body. Let both hands go. Stop waiting for him. All right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't take no chances. Yeah. Okay. Chris Bird with his father, Joe Bird, the only trainer he's ever had. And he says, the only trainer I'll ever have is my dad. Jimmy Thunder, working with Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, is the seventh trainer of his career. Thunder, 85 punches thrown in the first round, 36 in the second. Now he comes out and begins the second round, or the third round, as though he wants to go back to the tempo he established in round one. Why is Bird like to lay in the corners? Because he can protect himself from the big, himself from the big punches. When a guy has you cornered, he usually want to tee off and throw big punches at you, at you. If you're comfortable and if you have a good defense, you don't have to worry about it because you're going to see everything coming. You just make them wear themselves out trying to hit you, and they're not going to land much. The rope keeps you from falling, so you're not going to fall back and lose balance. You can support the punches, you can block, and the rope serves the support when you're defending against a big guy. Bird parrying Thunder's weak jab and then countering twice to his face. The tables are turned as Thunder backs around into the corner and Bird, la Bird lands a couple of body shots. And then the big punches, they don't like to be in the corner because they feel intimidated because they think this is where they want a guy at. So they figure if it's reversed, then they're in a bad situation. All right, well, one thing we're certainly seeing early is that Bird has great ring intelligence and uses it at all times. Yes, he does. Witherspoon's shoes have arrived in his dressing room, we're told. He might need them tonight to catch, uh, to catch up with Larry Donald. That's right. <laughs> might want track shoes. <laughs> Bird, laser-like accuracy with the left hand. Lands another right and a left on the face of Jimmy Thunder. Thunder seemingly startled by Bird's punching quickness and accuracy. Thunder looks like an, an Easter Island statue, and he fights like one sometimes. <laughs> His eyes are starting to swirl a little. Yep, he's getting tattooed. So even though Bird doesn't pack much of a wallop, 
he shows you that accurate, sharp punching means something regardless of whether you have great power. It means a lot. Uh, with a guy like Jimmy Thunder, you can have seven or eight trainers, but if you're used to going out there knocking a guy out, and once this guy sticks around and passes that point, you feel intimidated and you feel as though your fight is over. Did you see Bird faint Thunder with his head and then fire a punch almost like a look-away pass in basketball? Yes, he did. <laughs> that was slick. <laughs> Very slick. Let's don't go with one. Reach this out from me. <coughs> Just don't go with a one punch. Like I said, I hit him. I'm glad of it. Throw four or five punches when you got it going. And, and wait to watch out for the wild punch. That's all you got to look out for the wild punch. Here you see Bird making Thunder look like an oaf with the quickness of his hands. And here it is in real speed. Bird, laser like accuracy with the. Eddie, pop a bird. By CompuBox count in round three, Bird landed 61% of his punches, 37 out of 61. Thunder, 17 of 64, not making nearly the same impact. So round four begins, and Thunder tries to follow Eddie Mustafa Mohammed's instructions to go to the body. Letterman, how'd you score through the first three? Jim, three rounds to nothing, 30 to 26, Chris Bird. Jim, I think he's a pretty fighter, really. He's got all the moves. One thing I have to disagree with you, Jim, he could punch to the body all night. He doesn't have to throw a head punch, and he'd win every round of my card. I mean, really, you don't have to punch to the head, because he does everything you have to do to win a fight. Uh, that double jab is beautiful. He spins out of the corner beautifully, and he's just tattooing Jimmy Thunder. But, Harold, you do pay attention to body punches, and you know doggone good and well, there are a lot of judges who don't. Well, hopefully we have experienced judges in major fights. I mean, you know, we had a long discussion about that after the Foreman thing. I think that the judges working tonight are, are experienced enough to recognize good body shots. I hope so. Bird with another one-two. Landed the left behind Thunder's ear. if all of Bird's other attributes weren't enough to twist you in Office more different directions Office than you'd like to be twisted in. He's a southpaw to boot. <laughs> it's almost unfair. <laughs> well, he's starting to really get to Jimmy a little bit now because Jimmy is slowing and Bird is still just as quick as he was. And actually, he's going to speed up a little bit. And it has to be disencouraging to Jimmy because he can't hit him. He's trying everything. He just can't seem to land a solid punch on Bird. doubleheader on After Dark tonight. Heavyweight Chris Bird doing a paint job on Jimmy Thunder. That was the first time he did exactly what his father told him, which was to add to his combination. Don't be satisfied with hitting him one time. 
Chris Bird from the Boxing Birds of Flint, Michigan, has four brothers and three sisters, all or are boxing now or have boxed in the past. His father, Joe Bird, was a boxer. Patrick Bird, still active as a middleweight, or checking a junior middleweight, 12 wins, two losses, and there's a look at Patrick scoring a knockout victory. Sister Tracy Bird is 8-0 and oh as a lightweight. And uh, Chris says that Tracy is the hardest hitting of the Bird <laughs> boxers. He, he ain't know the hook yet. That's what he's yep, waiting yep. on. He ain't got to be a hard hook. He's got to be a series of hooks that open up that left hand to yep. get in there. Okay? He watching for the left hand. But you got to... And don't let him push you on the rope and yeah. butt you or cut you, okay? Keep yourself together. Let's go. Let's go, Pope. Round four, a CompuBox wipeout for Bird, who landed 32 of 54 punches, 59% against 6 of 53 for Thunder. And Bird is now catching many of Thunder's punches with his gloves. So Thunder tries to load up on power and just go right through the gloves, and he lands to Bird's neck with a hard right-hand shot. That's the best thing he can do, because he's not going to land nothing flush on Bird right now. He may as well just be comfortable with hitting his gloves and landing the body shot. Well, he should hit his arms. Come on, come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Off his neck, you think you could fight Bird, Roy? Well, I think I could fight Bird. I probably could. Would you? You know, I'll fight anybody. Pull out, Chris. Finish the sentence. If they pay you enough. Now you're talking. You already know the rest. I didn't even have to see it. <laughs> well, if he if he were to go on and win a heavyweight title, and it's, and it's certainly not out of the question, this is certainly a heavyweight that doesn't outsize you in a dramatic way. Nope. Bird straight up the pipe with the left hand again. Thunder came out fast to start this fifth round. Now he's gone back to a more normal activity level. And Bird begins to carefully pick those laser shots. Like Good that. Shot. Good body shot. You see, then he backs up. It's great to be able to make your opponent miss if you're a good boxer. But why would you just throw a quick little combination and get out of there? Because you don't want to let, leave yourself open. You throw, if you stay there and throw, go keep throwing the same punches, then you throw the punches too hard to just let them tee off on you between your punches. The best time to knock a guy out is to catch him between punches and hit him. And Bird knows that. Bird's chopping left hand over the top appeared to hurt Thunder momentarily, so he followed Thunder as Thunder backed up, but then Thunder got some time to catch his breath. Now, right there, he should have countered. Right. He made Thunder miss bad. That's the time to really count it. But if you hit him with three or four punches, like right there, now it's time to back off. Don't keep going because you're running to something big. And he doesn't want to run to the bigger punches because he's given up the size already. I'm just amazed at Bird's punching accuracy out of this style. I mean, this is a guy who really knows the geometry of the sport. He can find a way to put the leather on you. These big punches are tailor-made for Bird. He's a boxer. He's a quick boxer. He's a smart boxer. He doesn't have the big punch, so he doesn't get caught up in trying to knock him out. So who among the big-name heavyweights would give him trouble? Well, the only guy who would give him really trouble is Lennox Lewis. Don't worry about it. Because of Lewis's overwhelming power. And his size. Lewis has a lot of size. And Lewis is a pretty good boxer himself. Six now. So that's gonna be getting in there close. We don't yeah. want no cuts. Yeah, sure don't. Young sure. Head, stay out there and then box it this round. He tied. Yeah. Let's go. Bird. 
You saw the graphic with Bird's punching accuracy numbers for the first six rounds. First five rounds, I should say. Above 50%. Awfully hard to beat that. Now, when last we left, Roy, you were saying that the one prominent heavyweight who would give him trouble is Lewis because of his power and size. Are you telling me that that Bird would not be bothered by Evander Holyfield's style? Not really, because Evander sits in front of him, and Evander is not a rangy fighter. It'll be a good fight because Evander has so much heart. But Bird is usually going to outbox the guys that sit there and stand flat-footed. Evander is not really a big rangy fighter, so he'd have a harder time with Bird. And it's not 100% sure that anybody's going to beat anybody. But Bird would have a much easier time with the person his height or shorter likely than the Holyfield than he would with somebody tall like Lennox. Lennox is six feet five inches tall. That's just one of the things that differentiates Lewis from most of the other top heavyweights. Push off, push off, push now that Bo is gone and Galata has been discredited, Lewis pretty much stands alone among the big heavyweights. Chris Bird landing more or less at will against Jimmy Thunder, and you saw the cut above Thunder's left eye. Not enough Thunder and, or lightning in Thunder. He's had some opportunities, but he hasn't been able to really hurt Bird. Now, if he hits him clean like that, then he just doesn't punch hard enough. You see how Bird keeping that head moving? It's hard for a guy to hit a steel target like that. These big punches would not even take a chance at punching at your head, at your head if you move it that much. Well, Bird, which is why Eddie Mustafa Mohammed told him, just stick to the body, don't even bother with the head. Yeah, but how many years has he been going to the head without Eddie Mustafa? Very there you hard, go. Very hard to teach your old dog new tricks. There you go. One of the constant conundrums of the sport. It's about habits and reflexes, and most fighters only know one way to fight. The guys who can actually adjust and change and find another way to do it during a fight usually wear a championship belt. I think Bird's going for the whole mirror right now. beginning to trickle again just above the left eye of Jimmy Thunder. Thunder's very tired. Bird is not. Not at all. He's not throwing big punches. Oh, oh, you work on me. You work. James, let me, let me explain some to you, my man. Every time you hit the man, you hurt him, but you backing up and not following up. James, hold your ground and let your hands go. That's all you got to do. This guy hit you with his best stuff. You go work with him. Keep that jab knowing it. Don't let him special when you go. Don't be sitting there. He never, he's oh, don't be spraying like that, James. We'll be talking to Prince Nassim Hamed between fights here. Got him on Freddy on the 17th. Tremendous matchup. You got to shut down. What you done? You, you had pushing at you right left Look hand. Snap it. Turn it over. The power at the end of it. Then yep. you're catching. He coming right in on it. I got to turn it over. Okay? Let's go. And that last card you saw listed on the graphic, February 6th, four potential down-the-road opponents for Roy Jones Jr. in the light heavyweight division. Bird grinning as he lands the jab over and over. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> because he knows he has Jimmy to where he can hit him at will. He can hit Jimmy just about any time he gets ready to with anything he wants to hit him with. Harold Letterman 
how'd you have it halfway through? Jim, six to nothing, 60 to 53, Chris Bird. He gets an extra point in round one, and certainly he won the rest of the rounds 10-9. Jim, I gotta talk to you about the scoring area. When Chris Bird, when Jimmy Thunder hits Chris Bird, he hits him on the elbows and the forearms. That doesn't count as a clean, effective punch. You gotta hit a guy from the top of his head to his belly button on his body, you know, between his sides. If, if he blocks it, if, Jim, if uh, Chris Bird blocks the punch with his elbows or his forearms, you give Bird credit for good defense. It doesn't count as a clean, effective punch if it hits him on the elbows, and that's what Bird's doing. Picking up the punches with forearms and elbows. Eddie Mustafa Mohammed wants him to go ahead and hit him on the elbows and the arms and the back of the shoulder anyway because he hopes that will wear Bird down as the fight goes on. It, but, Jim, we've got to remember, it's not really in the scoring area. A judge shouldn't count the punches as we're landing. Not, we're, not ta- we're not talking about, about counting it as a punch, Harold. We're talking about breaking the guy down physically if you can that way. Heated discussion here. <laughs> Push off, Chris. It's a small enough arena that we can hear Eddie Mustafa Muhammad all the way across the ring as he tries to get Thunder to keep moving forward. You heard him between rounds saying, look, you're hitting the guy, but then you're backing up. And there's the reason. Because the guy's hitting him back. <laughs> Easily. Whoa, good try. Good left shot by Chris Bird. Backhand right by Bird. You know, as much as you admire the skill and the nerve of somebody like Bird for getting in with big, strong heavyweights, I can assure you that this performance will have many of the managers of heavyweights wishing that Bird was strangled at birth. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because they don't want to see a guy like this. Nobody's going to want to fight him, that's for sure. Oh, hard right hand shot by Thunder, got through the guard. Very good, very good. There's a slight more better round, James. You're starting to move your hand. Don't wait to the bell or the 30, 10 second bell. You better go up. Let your hands go. You're not punching, James. You're not punching. This kid is abusing you because you're not doing anything. Bottom line. Round. Come on, baby. I know, baby. It's fine. I'll see you. You're not doing it. You're not doing it. You're not doing it. Get what I'm saying? Get the water out of the way. Get the water. Okay. Okay. Okay, now this is everything in the bird coming. Oh, very good. Okay. Let's go to work in there this round, okay? This is going into the uh eighth round. Eighth round. Yeah, he's working on that eye. Yeah, yeah, round. All right, corner. Let's work. Have you ever seen with their mother in the corner as a chief second? Ooh, not many. <laughs> not many at all. Maybe the first. I think it's the first for me. You ever seen that, Larry? Nope. Rose Bird, mother of Chris Bird, is uh, one of the corner people. He said the whole family can box. I wouldn't be surprised if the dog is a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> This is a bird that darts through the thunder. Jimmy Thunder seems to have the attitude of a beaten fighter right now. I think he's just going to try to see can he find anything. And if he can, he'll try to score a push knockout. Push off, Chrissy. Push if off. If not, then he knows he can't win a decision at this point. Right. He's kind of going through the motions and hoping to land one big shot. Watch your heads coming in, fellas. Watch your head now. That makes the fight less entertaining because, of course, the easier it gets for Chris Bird, the fewer chances he's going to take. A lot of people say that don't like to see people that don't take chances, but when you're taught to box by your father, this is what he teaches you. I was taught not to take chances my entire career, and he's right because you can last longer this way, but your father cares about you more than anyone else. He's not going to send you out there 
to take a beat and get you all banged and bruised up. He wants you to go in and come out as safe and healthy as you possibly can. That's why he fights this way. Yeah, but uh, Chris Berg told us that everybody else in his family was a puncher. <laughs> well, <everybody laughs> Maybe that's why they weren't as successful as him. That's why Chris Bird is still going. And everybody can't take that notion and be that way. Well, the real pros like yourself, Sugar Ray Leonard used to say it to us all the time, a win is a win is a win. But, of course, you have a built-in marketing power that makes it easy for you to go ahead and post wins and maintain your status in the sport. Some fighters have to entertain. Have to entertain. People want to see entertainment. They want to see something different. So it'll be interesting to see how Bird deals with that particular conundrum as he continues on up through the heavyweight ranks. The one thing that's entertaining is to see him beat up on these bigger guys like this. I think the crowd loves to see things like this. Well, this has not been unentertaining, sure, sure. and uh, I feel sure. a little bad for having started the telecast by suggesting that a lot of people think he's unwatchable. But on the other hand, you can see what it is that the general boxing fan, the non-purist, might find a little annoying about it. The good part of this for Bird is that it's so easy for him to land punches. And still to come tonight, earlier we showed you Tim Witherspoon, who's had his shoes brought to him by now. There's the opponent, Larry Donald, out of Louisville, Kentucky. He once styled himself as the second coming of Muhammad Ali. The All Cincinnati that bravado. Lip. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, that's right. He called himself the Cincinnati Lip. Yeah, that's right, because he's from Cincinnati, not Louisville. My mistake. Okay. There's Rose Bird, mother of Chris Bird, and we told you about her work in the corner. Okay, now let's go to work on that speed. He tired, he tired. Yeah, yeah, I see. He ain't gonna train too hard for this game. Let your hands go, all right? You have to wake up. He's got the right amateur. You hear what Mama Bird said, Roy? What's that? You got to get that eye. <laughs> <laughs> the cut above uh, Jimmy Thunder's left eye has been exceedingly well treated by Al Gavin, one of the outstanding cut men in the sport. There ain't no milk of human kindness in the ring, even from Mama. <laughs> Harold, after eight rounds, how do you score it? Larry, I still got it a shot out. Eight to nothing. 80 to 71, Chris Bird. He's just jabbing it to death with that right hand, coming across with the straight left. Jim, the only thing that drives the judges nuts about Chris Bird is when he lays on the ropes, and one judge is looking at somebody's back, which makes it hard to see the punches. Other than that, the guy's too open. Blood trickles from the nose of Thunder, and Thunder looks to be all done in. He's just too tired, Roy. He's not going to be able to go much further. And Bird senses the opportunity and steps in and fires away. How long will Steve Smoger allow Thunder to take this kind of punishment? No longer. Well, you can't say the folks here weren't entertained. No. Arousing performance by Chris Bird. Very entertaining. All credit to the young man from Flint, Michigan. First they said he couldn't be a heavyweight. Then they said he couldn't succeed with this style. Well, look at him now. He's 23 and 0 with a knockout victory on Boxing After Dark. 107. 17. Roy Jones, let's take another look at the end of the fight and talk about the precision work in finishing that Chris Bird did. Well, right there, he had Jimmy hurt. He knew Jimmy was in trouble. He could hit Jimmy at will. He knew Jimmy was ready to give at any time. He did a wise thing by going to the body and coming back to the head. This kept Jimmy in trouble, wouldn't let Jimmy get off. There again, he moves his head, then he comes back, and he knows Jimmy is done. So he just kept the heat on. There's another body shot. See, Jimmy is not going to punch back when he's getting caught with these kind of punches. 
Well, for a guy whom I labeled a non-puncher, he certainly showed you how to finish. There's technique involved in that, and Bird used all of his masterful technique to put Thunder away. Another look at the finishing work of Chris Bird on Jimmy Thunder. 23rd victory, 13th knockout. I don't know. Would you say he's adding more power to his game, or was it just because of the circumstances here? No, I think he's adding more power to his game. He already possessed the power. It's just that he knows when it's time to use the power and when it's not. And referee Ed Dar I mean, uh, ring announcer Ed Darien with the official particulars Ladies here. Ladies and gentlemen, from Foxwoods Casino Resort here in Mashantucket, Connecticut, Double S referee Steve Smoger moves in and stops this bout at one minute and seven seconds of the ninth round, and a winner by a TKO and still undefeated, Chris Bird. Bird. Now let's have a nice round of applause for Jimmy Thunder. Let's hear it for him. Chris.